All right, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops, you here. This is going to be your sit rep for Monday morning. It is 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas. It is 425.22. Without further ado, let's hop over here to the board real fast. Got some interesting flights. I saw a flurry of uh, SAM flights take off out of the D.C. metro area, a.k.a. the Brown Zone, or uh, the Village, as we like to call it. But... Uh, I, this is interesting, though. I, four or five of them took off this morning, all headed westbound, uh, as you can see. This one here just seems to be getting off the ground. But uh, this is Nightwatch here as well. Took off out of uh, Macon, Georgia, headed up over uh, the central U.S. as these two. Now, I'm pretty sure we're confident that these will end up being Air Force Two because uh, if you get over here and look at the TFRs that are currently out, it looks like Southern California, uh, we've got a couple of VIPs down here that's going to be uh, Bob Marley. Uh, so more than likely, those flights are bugging out to pick her up. Uh, I just find it interesting because usually you don't leave them sitting there and take the, fl the planes back. Uh, they usually leave the aircraft out there with them. Uh, but while we're on TFRs too, let's just take a quick gander. Uh, these are space operations here. Uh, that's going to be an air show down there in Trump land. And I think, let me just double check what this one is right here. Yeah, another air show. So, uh, but yeah, space ops, space ops all through here. And then if we get up here to this area, uh, the one TFR that was over uh, flashbang is actually gone. Now the only one up here is the one over the uh, senior living center there. So uh, that's gonna cover our TFRs for today. But yeah, this is uh, just an interesting deal. They all took off at the exact same time little flurry now this one looks like it's jockey and took a little left turn there down towards uh texas uh these two continue to to go westbound and um this other one here just kind of hanging out but again five of the sam flights all up at the same time which i thought was just interesting now this one is probably tied to flashbang but um uh anyway there's that now let's get over here real fast also just want to show you uh in terms of our watch list, you guys can see a couple P-8s taken off this morning out of Jacksonville Naval Air Station. Nothing really to see yet. Also, those 757s we just talked about uh, that all bugged out at the same time. And uh, one B-52 up over the center of the U.S. You can see that one just took off out of uh, Shreveport or Bossier City, Barksdale Air Force Base. Uh, the P-8s really, nothing, nothing uh, to see there. Uh, and then, of course, we've got our military intelligence balloons at the top. Uh, four of them up right now. And uh, let's get over here to Europe. We'll take a quick look at stuff going on there. Now, the surveillance over there has been pretty interesting. Uh, we do have uh, SecDef and some other dude, Austin, I think his name is, uh, that actually went into Ukraine today, which I thought was a, a bold move. Um, but uh, it's going to be uh, your, your spy birds up. We got our normal red eye. We got our uh, R-135, which is actually the British one. And then that little Gulf 4 right there, uh, Gulf Stream 4 you see, that is actually going to be the Swedish bird. Again, these are all reconnaissance uh, technology. Notice this is Belarus to the right. Seem to be very focused in that general area today for some reason. Uh, don't know if it has anything to do with uh belkin and crew over there or if it's something else but get into the heavy lifts just show you what is also going on there notice we've got some stuff going up in, in the baltic region uh some stuff down here in cyprus middle east uh pretty light but they're still moving again this is just feeding the machine these are uh, aircraft that are bringing in assets to the region basically uh, whether it be troops or whether it be equipment uh so uh, as you know, we've been sending a lot of stuff. And then, of course, we still got the same East Coast uh, movement. I'm not really sure what's going on. It'll all come to the surface eventually, I am sure of that. But, uh, yeah, East Coast is just still kind of uh, the main central theme for all of our heavy lifts. This is uh, C-17, C-130s, uh, very, very concentrated on East Coast. So... Okay, let's get over here to our board now. As you can see, uh, real quick on the volcanic activity, we've got about five popping. This one is one that we should all pay attention to. This is ash, uh, the ash cloud alerts, but that is Krakatoa. That is a super volcano, friends. And if that thing glows, or <laughs> glows, if that thing goes off or blows, going to be a, a 
that's a pretty big one right there. So I think the last time this thing really went off uh, to an extreme was like 1883 or something. So it's probably due. Uh, Jakarta right here. Uh, I joke around about the whole east of Java thing, but uh, it's kind of funny because it's actually west of Java. Uh, this is east Java here, central Java, west Java. Um, but uh, down here in this general area, it's a reference in a B-52 song, and it's a movie called uh, uh, Krakatoa East of Java. So anyway, uh, it's clearly wrong, and uh, they, they weren't looking at the geographic aspect of that when they did it. So uh, we've got this one here, too. This is uh, Decono, another one spewing in the region. Uh, and let's get over here to Central and South America, and we've got kind of our South American ones. Central America is kind of quiet right now, which is unusual. They've been spewing pretty regularly, but these um, continue to go. So that's going to be your ring of fire and all your ash alerts. All right, let's get over here to flashbang. This is kind of a benign thing. Like I said, this guy is like a blind fart in a windstorm. He is, uh, I don't know what he's doing today. He's meeting with some hockey teams and uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. I didn't even know they had a hockey team. I'm not a hockey guy. So, uh, but yeah, I guess they just won the Stanley Cup. So uh, anyway. There is that nothing really to see here. Over to the marine side. Now, this is part of, like I said before, we are going to continue to keep track of this. They are going to take months to get this stuff uh, back to normal. It's going to take a long time because uh, you can only get so much in. This is Shanghai. This area right here going into Shanghai is very tight. Okay, There's not a lot of room to maneuver. Matter of fact, uh, these guys come out, uh, I forget what they call them, hover, hover captains or something, but they actually bring them out to ships that are moored out here and drive them in so that, uh, I guess they don't hit anybody, but it, uh, the traffic in here is insane, uh, and it's muddy water and you have also have to worry about, uh, <laughs> tides. Uh, so there's a lot of dynamics when it comes to this, uh, that come into play, but you can see a steady stream here of craft that are moving. These little arrows, these are cargo. And uh, when, they, when they have that arrow signal, you can see uh, the flow going in and out. So it looks like some things are starting to move. But uh, if you look at this backup out here, that is not, that's just really bad. Again, the reds are, are uh, oil tankers and the greens are cargo ships. Now that is just Shanghai. Uh, the normal probably sitting range may be about like this sitting over here where you have uh, a little bit of a backup waiting to get pulled in there. But this combined with this combined with this is astronomical and it just keeps going. They just keep backing up out here uh, as you can see. And then you get down south and it really doesn't get any better. Look at this same thing. This is just backed up and stacked uh, to get in. So what does that do to us? That is uh, the golden question, and this is what the media is not even talking about. I don't know if, the, if it's the fact they don't know it or understand it or the fact that they are just choosing not to. My guess is they're choosing not to because I think uh, if you really knew the impacts of this, anybody that is supply chain uh, oriented that knows or is in this industry knows the ramifications of this, and it is really bad, okay? Uh, the only one that I see reporting on it is actually Zero Hedge. And uh, he seems to be talking about it pretty regularly. Now, here's one of the other indicators. Now, the trucking industry is kind of a, uh, a very interesting dynamic in the fact that they have a problem uh, hiring people. As attrition takes place and people retire and get out of the industry, um, they can't get drivers to save their life because millennials don't want to drive trucks. And so um, they, it's, they have a hard time hiring people. But I just want to show you the demand for 2022. Look at this. You saw a little peak here, that was January. Look at the slope as we get into, now that is April 17th, so that's about a week's old data. But it's already in the decline and the stuff from Shanghai hasn't even really kicked in yet. So this is more than likely because of uh, the situation that's going on over there is going to just free fall. So uh, I would imagine you're gonna see a line that plummets because there's nothing coming in, okay? so. Uh, that is not a good uh, a good thing for the trucking industry. Uh, even though they are short of people, uh, the the movement of goods is bad. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Now here's another thing too, just to kind of back this up. This is over on Forward Observer in their uh, recent report today. 
And so Yellen, uh, U.S. Secretary, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said, our supply chains are not secure and they are not resilient. And I think there's something in long-term risk with the U.S. and other countries that's a threat that needs to be addressed. She doesn't have a clue about what she's talking about in terms of long-term. Uh, you can see the comment here um, by Forward Observer also said the same thing. Uh, that supply chain vulnerability is immediate. It's not long-term. And so um, we just kind of wonder if she is seeing something in the future that's cat catastrophic in terms of an economic decoupling from China. And that ties into this article right here and something that we need to all pay attention to. For the first time, Israel's central bank replaces a U.S. dollar reserve with Chinese currency. That, folks, to me is a writing on the wall because you see it already starting to take shape with Russia, we've seen it with the, with the petrodollar and, and fuel. Um, the fact that they're shifting over to this is probably an indicator that they see what's coming as well. So uh, again, news is not talking about that, but uh, Forward Observer pointing this out, it's the same thing we've been talking about, this supply chain issue is going to be very bad and it's probably about six weeks out before we start to see things begin to happen and then it's just going to keep on going through the summer uh, because things aren't going to show up as things deplenish on this, on inventory you won't be able to get them back in stock uh, matter of fact two of the companies the main manufacturers for apple have actually just shut down their facilities again uh, making the delays even more they're making people actually sleep in the f f uh, facility because they had another outbreak uh, and so it just continues to go on and on so not a good news story for us and for the rest of the world because like i said shanghai is the number one port in the world and when things are not moving in and out of there they're not being manufactured they're not being pushed out for consumption uh, it's going to tank the gdp in china it's going to tank our economy um, because of inflation and what the cost of goods are going to do now talking about that let's look over here at the food price index for this year, and you can see this red line right here is 2022, and notice it is straight up and down. That is <laughs> extremely bad. It was already on the rise in Flashbang's first term, uh, but you can see right now it is skyrocketing. It's going straight through the roof. If you get over here to this, this is actually a CPI, um, and this is a 12-month percentage uh, over time, right? But if you look at March 22, and it's not seasonally adjusted, just want to show you where we are They're, they they combine these these categories which is food and energy uh, they say that it's 8.5 percent right we just saw that inflation 8.5 percent but their math is pretty fuzzy and i don't know how they get there because uh, the energy cost for for this is fuel and oil and or gas right 32 percent increase all right this is major categories like food at 8.8%, but if you actually drill into these, well, first of all, and this is all items less food and energy, which those are commodities and other things, um, which is still up 6.5%, but uh, over a 12 month period, remember that now. But if you just took these two, divided them, actually added them up, divided them by two, you're at a 20% increase in terms of the inflationary amount. So, all right, now let's break into these categories. Food at home, 10% increase. Uh, food away, 6.9% uh, increase. But then look at these categories, and I don't know how they come up with this average. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Meat, poultry, fish, eggs, you can just see the increase, 13.7% up in over the last 12 months. Uh, dairy, up 7%. Food at home, fruit and vegetables, 8.5%. Uh, Non-alcoholic beverages, 8%, and then other food at home, 10.3%. So cereal, 9.4%. That's your wheat, okay? So uh, if this is any indication of what's coming, these numbers are probably going to keep going up considerably. So um, the news isn't telling you that because if they started to point out the fact that this stuff forecasted is, is going to keep con continuing to go up, uh, the fact that we're not getting any more supplies from China or at least limited supplies are going to be coming in. That's before the shortage of food starts to hit. Uh, it would probably put everybody into a panic and people would start gobbling up, uh, gobbling up all the assets that are out there in terms of food and uh, toilet paper, right? We'd have a run on toilet paper again probably. So, um, but yeah, 
that's why they're probably not telling us and they won't until it starts to happen and then they'll they'll start talking about it okay okay we talked about that on central bank now uh looking at some of the flights this is actually going to be a coletta flight i just want to show you uh although they do fly uh goods from china to the u.s and so does atlas air this one is actually going to warsaw poland and uh, that is more than likely moving some of these uh, goods that the U.S. has um, put into the theater over there, which are, for example, the artillery rounds and artillery trucks and vehicles and equipment um, that we just approved to push into there. So um, anyway, there's that flight land. I just want to point that out. Now, uh, over here, we're going to get back into the flights here in just a second. If we look at the cyber threat, you can see U.S. is just getting lit up. This is, uh, seems to be kind of the new flow, certainly higher than it usually is, all right? But uh, that is kind of the world as we see it right now in terms of cyber attacks. And uh, if you remember, we were talking last SITREP about the um, facilities catching on fire and things like that. These cyber attacks are kind of tied into that. I had somebody ask me if I was talking about cyber attack making facilities catch on fire. I think they couldn't tie the two together, and yes, I was. And actually, uh, that is what uh, part of what they can do is they basically tap into a facility system, cause it to overheat, and uh, and it can even cause it to catch on fire, right? But uh, usually, uh, they can take out equipment and things like that just because it's all connected. And so, uh, from a computer standpoint, it's got chips in it, it's got things that run it, uh, and if it's connected to any kind of system that they're monitoring. They can tap into that system and tap into that um, equipment. And so that's what you're seeing. And so there's a, uh, a large oil plant that's on fire in Russia right now. And it uh, makes you wonder if we aren't doing the same thing going back and forth uh, as we see this happen kind of consistently on both sides, right? We see our, our food plants catching on fire and our processing centers. And then over there in Russia, we see us taking out spots there, and they conveniently have fires as well. So that looks to be from a, you know, a visual standpoint, it definitely looks like that's what's going on between the two of us right now, all right? But it will certainly escalate, okay? Uh, remember, uh, Russia just told us, hey, listen, if you continue to provide Ukraine with stuff, uh, it's going to get ugly. And so this is us pumping 4.7 trillion, or sorry, billion dollars, I say trillion, billion dollars into Ukraine. Uh, the last spend was actually that $800 million with artillery stuff going in there. So uh, we will see how that settles with them, right? Probably not well. But um, also, if you look at, uh, let's just take a quick gander at the U.S. tankers here in the U.S. Just show you, pretty light, actually. Um, just a couple things over the Northeast. Other than that, it's not really... Uh, much to speak of, a little bit launching out of Texas region, but it's kind of light today. So it looks like we don't have a lot of fighters up in the general areas uh, across the United States, at least for right now. So, all right, Biggs Army Airfield has gone completely quiet. Uh, I go back, I look at the arrivals, even over the weekend, nothing, nothing on there, not even camber flights. Uh, so it looks like they are now pulling assets out of other locations uh, if we get over here to, this is uh, going to be Lakehurst, uh, Fort Dix. You can see FedEx came in and picked something up, rolled out. That's their, their um, home base is Memphis. So they probably flew in empty, picked up something out of, um, out of there and took it to Ramstein. More than likely, they're just carrying some assets over for us. That is a MD-11, so that's a pretty good-sized bird, all right? So... All right, to the camber flights. This is actually going to be your troop movements. Uh, just to show you what's going on right now, looks like we've got, uh, we had actually another one just dropped off. Uh, we had three flights coming out of Dover Air Force Base. We've got one coming out of Travis. Uh, this one is Sofia. That's probably coming back empty or it's bringing some troops back, but that one is in Bulgaria. Uh, that is a base location we have down there. And then this one here at uh, Doha, which is um, in the Middle East. And that is going to be your camber flights moving in and out. So uh, the ones that seem to be really busy are actually the Brits. And although they aren't the, you know, the leaders on the board in terms of uh, the assets that they're giving, they are also not the same size of us, right? And so um, 
they're not spending the same amount of money, but they do appear to be putting a lot of boots on the ground, which is uh, a little different. And so we'll see. And they continue to do it as we watch these things. Now, there is one flight in here that that Triple R seventy two twenty five. I believe that is an R one thirty five doing some work, but um, everything else troop movement. You can see we got it uh, across here across uh, the Med and just on the corner of the uh, Black Sea in the region that's down south. That's probably going close to uh, Sofia as well in Bulgaria. And then these flights coming back. So uh, again, the UK continues to just feed the machine. So it looks like when this thing goes hot, the two that are going to be right up there in the front are going to be the U.S., U.K. Uh, for the most part, all right, in terms of troops, in terms of equipment. Uh, the question is, how much of this equipment is going into the region for us versus Ukraine? Okay, um, that'll be found out here pretty quickly. So it's going to be the Ruskies. Nothing showing actually live in terms of flights, but we just had two land. Uh, this one landed an hour, one minute ago. This is one of the special flight de uh, detachments. Uh, if you notice, it was actually down here on the corner of the Black Sea. Both of them came out of that region. Could be why we had that uh, R-135 out here uh, running across the area. Remember, we had that um, the one just in our last sit rep actually flying out here all, right along the edge of that. Uh, and that has that capability of tracking data and, and people well on both sides of that okay and so here's the other one so it looked like it was a two ship uh uh set same thing came out of this area went back up here that one went to um that's going to be saint petersburg russia and this one went back to moscow all right so it looks like they had some kind of delegation down there in the general region but they stayed within russia so all right U.S. Navy Logistics, just so you guys can see, they are moving stuff as well. It's not just the Camber flights. Remember, Camber's moving troops for the most part. This stuff is moving uh, equipment and assets. Could be moving some troops, but I think it's equipment and assets. So uh, that one seems to be headed into, uh, well, let's see if it goes uh, probably into the Baltics. Could be heading into Latvia, somewhere around there. Um, but uh, again, we are continuing to pump assets and equipment into that region, which is an indicator that none of this stuff is going away. It's not going to slow down. It's just a matter of time before this thing kicks off. If I had to guess, the timing of this war, the timing of the food shortage, uh, and all the stuff that's going to happen is probably around the time of our election, which would probably freeze everything in play. I don't know that they would continue on if you had food shortages well in play. Uh, you could have some social unrest, which would probably keep them from doing any kind of elections in the major cities, which would cause them to halt it. Uh, and the reason for that is because if the GOP gains seats, which we think they would probably do in this next election cycle, uh, it would change kind of the power and play within Congress and the Senate, and they can't have that. So um, it'll be interesting to watch, to say the least. All right. Okay, Omni Air, again, these are troop movers. This one just dropped off the board, but it looks like we've got another uh, set of legs uh, headed out here to Japan. So we continue to pump stuff out here into uh, Asia as well as into Europe. Uh, it's going to get to a point where we're going to be so lean here in the U.S. that it's going to be probably National Guard will have to cover things because uh, everybody's getting deployed, it looks like, at this point. So, all right. Over here to open ADSB Exchange, just take a quick gander at that. Uh, I'm actually showing about 319 aircraft up, but that's covering Europe. So just the U.S., roughly 275. Uh, we won't count these down here. Um, but we do have a 737, uh, which is a Mexican 737. Okay, that's fine. This is a French bird. Looks like it's headed down in this general area, probably Venezuela, somewhere in that general area. Uh, location and then these teal 38 and teal 01 now those are usually uh, hurricane hunters right tied to the weather uh, national weather service look to be headed out to the islands i don't see anything out here that would uh, indicate um, we have storms or anything like that but they seem to be headed out that general direction okay all right and back over here to 
Uh, let's do just a quick roll up as we get into, let me make sure I save these from a SAM flight perspective. And if I can get this thing to work for me. All right, just lock it up. All right, here we go. That's what I was trying to get. That's my watch list. Don't want that one. Let me turn the watch list off. And let's get into our general list uh, as we untag some of this stuff. All right. Not playing well with me today. So, all right. Well, we're not going to mess with it anymore. I will come back to it. Uh, but in general, it looks like we're continuing to feed the machine both sides, the Pacific and on the Atlantic side into Europe. Uh, looks like we've got all indications that uh, food prices are getting ready to go super high. Uh, so inflation may be doubling what we're seeing uh, today at 8.5%. It looks like it is just month over month just creeping up. And uh, we haven't even considered the shortages yet coming out of Asia, uh, which are on the near-term horizon, probably six to eight weeks out before we start to see an impact from that. Uh, you'll notice also that the uh, ports uh out here in la let me back up and i'll just show you are starting to lean out it's not backed up as it was um, but that's because the flow is not coming in so uh, if you look at long beach in that area these are all kind of in dock being unloaded these are waiting to go in these are oil tankers here again uh last time we looked at this we had a hundred plus boats sitting out here doesn't appear to be the case now. So that's because we don't have the goods coming in. So that is kind of an early indicator that um, this is going to be empty here pretty soon or very, very little coming in. Uh, and they'll probably uh, put a flag in the ground and say it's a victory because they've been caught up and everything's good. But the reality is the flow of goods have stopped. And so you'll see the ports and everything start to get very, very quiet here uh, in the U.S. So all right, listen, that's going to be our sit rep for today. Again, uh, if you are not making preparations, you need to start. Um, if you are, uh, it's time to shore them up, get those plans in play, because this is going to get pretty serious pretty quickly in the next six to eight weeks, I think. We'll start to see it bubble in, and then from that point on, it'll, it'll just continue to get crazy. So, all right, that's it. Listen, you guys, uh, stay frosty out there. Keep that powder dry, and uh, we'll see you soon. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.